What's going on, second grade? Mr. Hunter here with your second grade language and phonics worksheet. Uh, we're going to be doing pages 273, 274. And as you may have noticed in a lot of our subjects, we are doing some review. So we're going to be talking about suffixes. Um, we're going to be talking about diagramming the sentences. You have some um, dictation that I'm going to give to you uh, down at the bottom of your page on page 273. So let's get ready to jump in. Um, let's write our, write our names at the top. Again, it's pages 273 and 274. I really like how you guys have been working um, the last few days and I, I really want to just commend you and say great job. Um, keep up the good work uh, with what you're doing and you guys are really finishing strong, especially in your language and phonics. Okay, let's look at the page. Let's look at the, uh, the top of the box. We're going to read that. Remember these suffix spelling rules. When a root word ends with one consonant, a consonant is any letter of the alphabet that is not a vowel. So when it ends with one consonant, and the vowel in the word is short, double the consonant before adding a suffix beginning with a vowel. That sounds confusing, but just look at the example. You have big, then you add er. So you add bigger, bigger. It ends with a consonant and the vowel is short. So the I in big is short, and then it ends with a G, which is a consonant. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna double the consonant, which is the G, and then you're gonna add the E and the R at the end. So bigger, so you had big, you add that consonant, double it up, so there's two Gs now, and then you don't just leave B-I-G-G, -G, you have to add the E and the R. So you put that at the end and you have bigger. So big, silent, short consonant, or short vowel, and a, a consonant at the end, you add bigger. Let's look at the next part. When the root word ends with a silent E, drop the E. So when it ends with a silent E, drop the E, then you add a suffix that begins with a vowel. So let's look at this. Large, er. So do we need to put a two, two E's there? We already have large, we already have an E at the end of it. Drop that and just add the ER, all right? So you have large, you don't need a two E's on there, just drop that one E, then add ER. So large, L-A-R-G, add the ER, larger. All right, you're adding ER to an adjective when comparing two things. So when you have two things that you're comparing to and it's an adjective, you're gonna add ER. You add EST to an adjective when comparing three or more things. So two, you add ER, three, add EST. Everybody think of that. Just when you see two things that you're comparing, ER. When you see three, EST. We're gonna get some practice with that in just a second, all right? John is taller than James. Who are we talking about? We're talking about two boys. So only two people, we just add ER, taller. If I say John is small, smaller than James, we're still talking about two boys, so we add ER. Look at this, John is the tallest boy in his class. We're talking about several boys, not just one. So if I say Jeremiah is taller than Sam, I'm gonna say that for our first grade, Jeremiah is taller than Sam. But if I say Jeremiah is the tallest of the first graders, I'm not just talking about Jeremiah, I'm talking about Dylan, I'm talking about Sam, I'm talking about Eliana. So we're talking about more than one, all right? Let's look at number one and we'll go over the directions and I'll let you know what you're gonna be doing. Um, you guys will probably fly through this pretty easy. All right, number one, it says read the sentences. Write the correct adjective in the blank. So here we go. We have an adjective that's in parentheses, but we gotta fix it, all right? Our new tent is nice than our old one. All right, what are we doing here? We're only talking about two tents. We have our new tent and our old tent. So when we only have two, what do we add? Do we add EST or ER? That's all you have to think about. Remember the two. You're talking about two things, you add ER. Talking about three things, EST. We're all talking about two tents, our new tent and our old tent. So we're gonna put nicer. Our new tent is nicer nicer than our old one. Okay, let's do the next sentence. The hike we took today was short than yesterday's hike. How many hikes are we talking about? We're talking about today's hike. We're talking about yesterday's hike. So that's what we need to do. The hike we took today was shorter than yesterday's hike. We add ER because we're only talking about two things. Three things, you add EST. You're going to do the next two on your own. I think you'll be able to do that just fine. Number two, it says add the suffixes to the root word. So you're adding ER to icy, green, and yummy. And then you're gonna add EST to those same words. So how is it gonna look? Which letter do you drop? If you need to understand, look at the end, IC, IC, IC. And look at the definition of what you do in the box at the top of the page. You need to read that over to see what you do. ICER, ICS, ICER, ICS. But what do you drop? What do you drop? What do you add? I'm not gonna tell you, I'm asking you. <laughs> All right, um, let's go to our dictation at the bottom of the page. You can uh, keep going just, um, or keep going after you finish the dictation. I'm gonna give you the first one. There are blanks. You have three blanks, I'm gonna give you three words. First one is good job, good job. 
you write the word that you don't see um, that you don't see there. Good job, good job. The next blank is better job, better job. So you have good job, then you have better job. Then you have best job, best job. So good job, better job, best job. Which job do you want? You want the best job, all right? Good job, better job, best job. All right, turn your page, turn your page. I'm just gonna give you the, um, the directions for what you're gonna be doing here. Number one, it says write the words under the contractions. So you see where, aren't, should've, wasn't, it's, I'm. Remember, when you have a contraction, you're taking two words and you're combining them together to make one. So where, if I say we're going to the store, Who's going to the store? We are. We're going to the store. So what are the two words that you need to put down there? We are going to the store. We are going to the store. We're going to the store. All right. What about the one that's next to it? Should have. Should have. You should have told me. You should have told me. What two words are we combining? You guys understand what you're doing? I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys do. So I'm just giving you two. I'm trying not to do the work for you as you guys have been doing great. And then we have our test on Friday. So I want to let you practice this on your own. So just think about two words. They're becoming one. All right. Number two on the back, you're going to write may or can. So what is the difference between may or can? May is when you're asking for permission. It is not the month of May, even though we do have a birthday. And what? Three more days, Michael. All right. May. May. May is asking for permission. May I go to the restroom? May I sharpen my pencil? May I do that? Now, can. When you say can, I'm not talking about a can of vegetables or a can of corn or anything like that. I'm saying can. Do I have the ability? May is for permission. Can is the ability. Can I jump over that building? Can I jump over the desk? Can I make the basketball? Can I jump or can I dunk? Can I dunk? It's ability. Do you have the ability? So what we're going to do, let's read the questions and make sure that we're actually putting the right one. Mom, blank, I call grandma this afternoon. Can I call grandma this afternoon? Do you have the ability? Can you pick up a phone? Can you dial numbers? Yeah, you have the ability. But what do you need? You don't need ability. You need permission. And what's the word that gives us permission? May. May I call grandma this afternoon? That is perfect. That's what you're going to be doing for the next three there, using between can and may. Something that's showing ability is can. Something that's asking for permission is may. Okay? All right. Now, number three, write a predicate part for each sentence. Write a predicate part. What's the predicate? The predicate tells us what's going on in the story. The predicate tells us what's going on in the story. So the first one says, my silly puppy. My silly puppy what? Here's where you guys can be creative, Mackenzie. All right, Ada, Solomon, Naomi, Michael. All of you can be creative, Mackenzie especially. My silly puppy, you have a puppy. Your silly puppy did what? That is the predicate. Tell us what your predicate did. Tell it, or tell us what, your, what the puppy did. That's the predicate. Tell us what it did. And be creative. You have that long little blank of space right there. Don't just put my silly puppy ate. Ate what? Do something, all right? Be creative with that. Write the predicate. Ben and Jacob, what did Ben and Jacob do? You guys can do anything you want. That's appropriate. That's good for class. I think you guys are going to do well with that too. Use your brains. Use your brains. Be smart about it. Now, number four. It says write a subject part for each sentence. Wait a minute, Mr. Hunter. We just wrote the end of the sentence about what they did. Now we have to write who was doing it. Write a subject part for each sentence. So what you have there, it says taste sour, taste very sour. What tastes very sour? What tastes very sour? You know what I would put for me? I've had this candy called Sour Patches. Sour Patches taste very sour. What tastes sour to you? What tastes very sour to you? What do you know tastes very sour? You can look it up. You can make up some. All right, and the other part, flew to the top of that very tall tree. What flew to the very top of the tall tree? All right, you're putting the subject. So the one part and three, you're putting the predicate, which is the end of the sentence. Number four, you're putting the uh, subject. And number five, it says, mark the sentence, diagram the sentence. My chocolate cupcake fell off my plate. When you see the subject, you underline it once. When you see the verb, what did the subject do? You underline it twice. Then you're gonna put the subject on the left side, you're going to put the verb on the right side in the blank space on the line, okay? So the subject gets underlined once, the verb gets underlined twice. That is your language and phonics lesson for today. 
um, really, really cool um, different exercises. I think it's making your brain work in a variety of ways. You're not just doing one thing about adjectives. You're not just doing one thing about commas or proper nouns or common nouns. You're not just doing anything about verbs. You are combining a lot of different lessons that we've learned over the year to try to refresh your brain and your memory about what it, what it is that's expected of you and what you need to do. I think you're going to have fun with it. Have fun, please. Look, looking forward to talking to you guys tomorrow. Remember, your YouTube, uh, your test is going to be on YouTube on Friday. So tomorrow we'll be doing the next lesson on page two, 275 and 276. And it's more work with what we're doing today, E-R-E-S-T. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.